the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. She said, Mummy, I just love learning at home. And I said to her, How come? And she said, Anytime I get to be with you is a good day. Oh. It was just a melt your heart moment. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. Normally I'm really happy on a Friday. Normally I'm so excited. But um, lockdowns continue with. Realistically, for Sydney and Brisbane, no end in sight. If you're in the Sydney area, uh, we are with you. We haven't been doing it as long as you, but we're based in Brisbane, uh, Kylie and I, and we are with you. Oh, by the way, I'm Justin. I'm here with Kylie. We're the parents of six kids. I'm the founder of happyfamilies.com.au. I've got a PhD in psychology and I help people to be happy, uh, but... <laughs> what, how's, how's that going for you today? <laughs> wow. I'm really having to draw on the stuff that I've learned and apply it to my own life and... I have to be honest, the last couple of days, I mean, we're only a week into this lockdown, but it's been really challenging. It's, it's, it's actually been pretty tough. Can I, can I go on a, like a 20-second rant, though? What I'm frustrated by is just the, just the lack of control. And, and I think this is a, a central issue that we're facing. I did an ABC radio interview just the other day about how to help kids to get through this, especially the Year 12 students who are now worried about what's going to happen with so e- hard. end of Year 12 exams are not too far away. And there's The flow-on effect for this, I think, it will manifest for years yeah, yeah, with I our rec- kids. I reckon it probably can. It doesn't have to, but just the issue of control, that's, that's actually what's gotten under my crawl more than anything. And as somebody who gets paid to bring large audiences together, there's been a bit of stress around the financial side of things as well. I'm not going to – it's not a pity party, but let's be honest, nobody's going to hire me to give a talk in a room full of two or 300 people right now. It it can't happen. So there's the the lack of control that everybody feels when the government makes a decision and we just kind of have to go along with it. And and I'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing. It's just that's what it is. Uh, It's it's a really, really – tough time. And then there's the kids. Well, you know, it's interesting. You're talking about this feeling of lack of control. I think that our seven-year-old feels like she's got absolute control over (laughs) her destiny right now. She is loving homeschooling. Well, we can't call it homeschooling. It's learning at home because anyone who's a teacher is going to say, you're not homeschooling. Anyone who homeschools their kids is going to say, you're not homeschooling. So sure. she's, she's loving, learning at home. Loving the learning at home. And it was so cute yesterday while we were making some Play-Doh, she decided she wanted green and she wanted to put some essential oils in it. All of these things that she <laughs> right. just, she doesn't get to choose at school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I said to her, she said, mommy, I just love learning at home. And I said to her, how come? And she said, any time I get to be with you was a good day. Oh. It was just a melt your heart moment. Oh, hashtag mum goals. <laughs> oh, wow. But I was so grateful, for, again, for her articulateness. She has this ability to just says it. She has this. <laughs> I love that you said her number one articulateness. This isn't a word. And then you've stumbled <laughs> over the next sentence. That's so perfect. Oh, COVID. <laughs> honestly, this lockdown's doing more. <laughs> Mess with my head. <laughs> So Emily's loving learning. She's loving it. The big kids are struggling this time around with motivation. Yeah. We've got completely capable, independent learners and they are really, you know, happy to do their own things, but they're finding this time around just a lack of motivation. Yeah, it's I've, hard. Not, not that I've been trying to get onto Netflix myself, but I have heard a few complaints from other people who are like, how many Netflix licenses have we got? Because every time I get on, I'm kicking someone off or I get blocked because – and it's like, we've only got two and nobody should be on because you're supposed to be doing your schoolwork. It doesn't seem to be going very well. Actually, maybe maybe we can share our I'll do better tomorrows. I'll, I'll, I'll go with mine because it kind of fits the theme of where we are right now. Um, this week with my ups and downs and my just trying to get my head into the game given what we're facing, I kind of um, – have you noticed that when you're feeling a bit stressed and out of control in one area that you kind of clamp down with stuff that you can control in other areas? So I'm frustrated in the office and so I walk into the house and it's like, and now the kids aren't doing what they should be doing so I'm going to control them because at least I can take care of that. And and I don't think that I've really kicked any dad goals particularly effectively this week. And a couple of days ago, I, um, I, I, was, I was pretty fed up. The kids were watching, I think they were probably up to about hour six of television. Oh, it wasn't that bad. Oh, maybe it was hour seven. I don't know. But it, <laughs> it felt like they'd watched a lot of TV. They'd been on screens nonstop. And I know we say relax the rules and I totally get it. And yet I was just really struggling to implement it in my own home. And I kind of was like, enough's enough. 
Like, you guys, you know what's expected. There's all this stuff. You've got to practice your instruments. You need to move your bodies. You need to have conversations with real people. Like, there's stuff that you've got to do. And how did that go for you, honey? Well, the children just sort of looked at me a little bit stunned and nothing changed and you got cranky with me and I stormed back to the office and thought, I'm going to watch some Instagram reels. (laughs) But then something happened uh, yesterday morning about 24, 48 hours after the, the blow up that I'd had. And and let's be honest, it wasn't excessive or over the top. I just expressed some annoyance and, and frustration with the kids. But our 11-year-old, Lily, walked up to me and said, hey, Dad, check this out. And she gave me her routine, her schedule for the day. And in that routine, she's got an hour of schoolwork followed by half an hour of Netflix, followed by another hour of schoolwork, followed by a half an hour of physical activity, followed by lunch, followed by an hour. Like she's mapped out her day and she's put everything into the day, the music practice and the, uh, the, all, the, the, the physical activity, all the stuff that matters, she's actually put into her schedule so that she can show us that when she's on a screen, it's okay because she's going to do the other stuff. And watching her implement it since then, like she's nailed it. And – Oh, it just feels so good. And it reminded me of the, the value of routine and just making sure the kids have got those expectations. And I, I, I'm just feeling like I, I got it wrong. When we express our frustration, if we can do it the right way in the right place, the right time, the right person for the right reasons, we can actually turn that frustration into some positive outcomes. And in this case, I'm just, I'm, I'm not sure if I've done bad or done well, but I'm really proud of her for responding the way that she has. Well, I think there's a couple of take-homes there and one of them is there's so much that you can't control but giving your children the opportunity to control the things that they can control makes such a difference and routine is so important. The routines at the moment are completely out the window from the norm and so what is our new routine and and how do we kind of let them have autonomy around that? And for people who aren't in a lockdown situation, the same principle still applies. The kids have still got their morning routine or their afternoon routine, the stuff still has to happen. And uh, while I probably could have expressed myself better, the outcome has been fantastic. So my I'll do better tomorrow is I'm going to sit down with the other kids and say, hey, look what Lily did. What are you going to do? Let's see the routine. Let's make this happen because when they follow the routine, when there's a routine that they can walk through, it actually takes the pressure off everybody because they know that the necessary boxes are being ticked and it's going to build well-being rather than reduce it, which is what lockdowns do for so many people. Well, I'm a little bit nervous about sharing mine, but we'll we'll do do that after the break. We will. It's the Happy Families Podcast. For a happier family, try a Happy Families membership because a happy family doesn't just happen. Details at happyfamilies.com.au. It's the Happy Families Podcast, the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. And today we are sharing our reflections of the week that was. I'll do better tomorrow is where we talk about what went well, what we learned, how we can be better parents moving forward. It's all about getting the intention right so that we can make our families flourish. How did you go? Well, last week I admitted that I had read our daughter's oh, diary. Yes, we're going to go there. We oh, are. Yes. We preempted that there might be a bit of a flow-on effect Some backlash. from that. Yeah, so, so we, we put it on Facebook and we said, hey, what do you think? Is it ever okay to read your kid's diary, their, their journal? And uh, it's fair to say that most people said you did the wrong thing. Absolutely. Hands down, <laughs> almost 100%. Yeah. It's never okay. Mm. Yeah. So what was interesting- Strong opinions. Very, very, very strong opinions. Yeah. I was grateful that everybody was just- uh, content in their opinion. There was there was no backlash. There was no. Well, I did say be nice to Kylie. <laughs> you did. We but, don't want but Kylie. I was, the I was just really grateful. It, you know, and, and this is how we should be able to use social media. We should be able to share our opinions and have strong opinions without it actually being you know negatively impacted in other people's lives. So I was really grateful that everybody that shared was able to share very very strong opinions and they did um, for their case, but they did it in a respectful way. And that was just, it was really nice. For what it's worth, I actually disagree with the majority opinion. And I think that what you did was fine. Uh, But I didn't say that last week. I just wanted you to share your story. But I reckon there are times where parents probably should be a little bit Snoopy, I don't think that we should be making a habit of it, and you certainly weren't doing that. But I think that there's an argument for it. Anyway, uh, what, what did well, people one of the say? things that really stood out to me was there was there was consistently throughout the message was have open relationships with your children, and they won't feel like they have to hide things from you. And I just dis- totally disagree. 
totally disagree with that because we have beautiful relationships with our children, all of them, and you and I have a beautiful relationship as well. But there are some things that I write in my journal that I just, I can't articulate in words. Like I, it, it's only in the fact that I'm able to write it on a page that I can actually bring it out of my head. You're doubling down. So last week after the story aired, I had this desire to talk with our daughter and I confessed. I told her what I'd done. And as anyone would respond, she kind of was, she wasn't actually sure how she felt about it. And I talked to her about the circumstances of how I had asked her to put away her journal and she hadn't and that it was sitting there and that I was a little bit curious and so I picked it up and as I was putting it away, I started flicking through. And she kind of looked at me with this kind of coy smile like, and? And I said, and the reason I'm telling you this is twofold. Firstly, mummy and daddy talked about the fact that I did this on the podcast today and I'm a little bit, I I don't ever want you to find out stuff (laughs) after the fact on the podcast. I I want you to know that you know, that I'm here. So, and that so it was really just self-protection? No, it wasn't. It was an acknowledgement that after I'd done it, it was like, I, I want to talk to you about this sure. because this isn't normal behaviour. Yeah. I don't go snooping. I didn't go looking for it. And so and so we talked about it a little bit. And at the end of it, what blew me away, this gorgeous little kid, she thought I had read her journal to the world. <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> she thought I had shared her journal on the podcast. Once she knew that I hadn't shared it on the podcast, she was like, oh, she said, I'm so glad you didn't read the other one. I was like, <laughs> right. what? Show me the other one. What's in it? I didn't know. But what's so curious about that is that when she said that, obviously she's 11. She's got so many exciting things going on in her world and mm. they're really big for her. Mm. I'm not interested in reading her journal to find out what it is she doesn't want me to know. I already know because I've heard her and her cousins talking. It's all about <laughs> boys that they like in their classes. But what I loved about the situation was the acknowledgement that I could share with her what I had done, firstly, and secondly, also acknowledge to her that it's not something that I would normally do, that her journal is a sacred space and it's not something that I go looking for. But if she ever wants to talk to me, she can. And she just she just enveloped me. Mm. She was so grateful that we were able to have the conversation, that I could talk to her about the things that I had read and how grateful I was for it. But just like I said last week, even if it had been bad – it would have given me an opportunity to look at her in a new way and work out how I could connect with her differently. And so as I read through all of the comments, there was a handful that I just thought were amazing, different to everything else that had been read. Oh, you mean on Facebook? On Facebook, yep. yeah. One mum said, she said, the mother of one of the Columbine shooters advised she wished with all her heart she had read her son's journal. She felt it may have a allowed her to stop the massacre. I would have said absolutely no until I read her book. It's not always possible to tell if a child is having mental health problems. Wow. Like this is an extreme case, Mm. but the acknowledgement that if we've got good relationships with our kids, then they'll be able to tell us everything just doesn't fit the bill here at Mm. all. Mm. There's an acknowledgement that our kids often don't know what to do with their things or why they're feeling what they're feeling. And when they can't articulate it, then there has to be a way for us to be able to find some common ground, some place where we can come together and talk about things. Mm. The other one that really just jumped out at me, she said, I think it depends on the context. Now I kind of wish that I had a journal for my parents to sneakily read as a teenager. I was self-harming and I was too scared of seeing myself as insane to say the words out loud. So there was no way I'd talk to my parents. I ended up just working through it on my own with time. I think in certain circumstances it can be a safe option, but should only be done if there are significant concerns. Yeah, But the last one that really, really stood out to me, she just said, this is difficult and I'm going to go against the crowd and be neutral. Privacy and respect versus safety and understanding. People can go on about your children trusting you and that is vital. But teens carry burdens that they don't want and need, but feel they can't share shame or consequences, etc. Parents who love unconditionally understand the reason behind the secrecy, but hold the safety of their children seriously. I personally would like to think my child would come to me about anything but if they are struggling in their daily lives and they can't find the words they want and need to tell me I will break the privacy zone if for a moment we can be real we can wish suicide and even heavy clouds of horrible things don't have a place in our children's lives but they can 
and she just goes on to say that, you know, the relationship is so important and the safety of our children is mostly important. So these these people were dealing with some pretty heavy um, scenarios here. This was not the case with our, um, with our daughter. I wasn't snooping. I hadn't, I hadn't gone looking for it. It was out and about. And it was her gratitude journal, which is a very different scenario. But I was just really grateful that there were people who were comfortable enough to go against the grain because it's very easy for us to sit in our safe seats and say, no, I would never when we haven't been placed in a situation where we just might want to or need to. Well, I have a confession to make. What's your confession? Your journal kept me captivated. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I haven't read it, but I know you keep one and one day I will. You're probably It only dead. talks about how much I love you. Oh, you're so good. <laughs> the take-home message is that it's tricky and sometimes when you really need to know what's going on and they're not telling you, you will seek information from whatever source you can. But for the most part, we want to have that trusting relationship where we can talk to our kids about anything and hopefully they'll talk to us. Well, uh, we really hope that you've enjoyed the podcast. Our time is up. Uh, good luck if you are in lockdown. If you're not, enjoy the weekend because you probably will more than us. <laughs> Can I say that? I'm sure we can find something creative to do. If you're in lockdown, uh, we wish you well this weekend and we hope that you're able to have some high quality time with your family in ways that work for you. The Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Rulon from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. If you'd like more information about how to make your family happy, hey, we've had a really big upswing in interest in the Happy Families memberships lately. That's because we give you tips, tricks and ideas on a weekly fortnightly and monthly basis to build happiness into your family. Check it out at happyfamilies.com.au. Listener.